Welcome back to the final squeeze of today's Splash of Paint, where it's time for us to rejoin Warren Seeley as he adds the finishing touches to today's portrait project. Okay, welcome back. Now, earlier on, we saw this painting we blocked in. Um, so I'm gonna get straight back in, uh, in the same order that I started from, with the darks and working up to the lights. So um, we get straight back into the, into the darks here. Now, I'm adding some painting medium into my paint now. I'm using liquid today, which is a fast drying medium. So we just go back in. I need more black and maybe some blue in there. So I go back in. I'm using a slightly softer brush now. I like a really good stiff bristle brush when I start for scrubbing the painting on. But now, as I'm adding painting onto an, you know, another layer, um, I like a slightly softer brush just to place the paint. So we get back into this and I'm going to sort of go in with a bit more you know, definition here, a bit more care. I was just scrubbing very loosely before. So we get back into this. Now, the, it's important to work. I always tell people to put the darks in first, which is a, a standard thing in oil painting, but also to put the background in because it's good to get this in first because it's much easier to judge your flesh tones to the darks and to the background. If you just, if you tried to put the, the face in without all this in, it would be very difficult to judge these tones correctly. Um, so we keep moving and we get back into this face. Um, what, I, what I'm gonna do straight away is I'm gonna add more light in to the face. So we just start put some, putting some highlights on. And once you do this, areas begin to pop out. This is a really nice part of the painting where areas start to jump out. The nose, you'll, hopefully you'll see that the nose will kind of pop forward. Um, I can put that on. A bit of light there. There's always a little highlight under the lip there. Um, quite a pinky light on the lip. So uh, areas are starting to come forward, to pop out. And I really need to tidy this area, or well, this area here is a bit clumsy. I need to tidy that up a bit. And as I said earlier, the, the cheeks, the nose, the chin, you, they're, they're, they're always a bit redder. There's more blood flowing to these areas. And they're always a bit warmer, a bit, bit redder. And so we just add red into that mix. Just redden it up. And maybe some alizarin. Actually, I could use a softer brush there. Again, softer brush. Nicer to just place the paint there. And in this area, now these transitions, I need to get these transitions from the shadow to the light. I need a transition tone in between those areas. And in this case, it's quite warm. It could have some burnt sienna there, I think. A bit of burnt sienna. So we really warm this area up a bit. Okay, so I'll just blend with the finger a bit. And all of this can be kind of warmed up and nice warm transitions. You can put pure red going down the nose here. Pure red tone there. You can go quite strong in that area. It's quite surprising sometimes how you can get away with a, just a pure, pure stroke of a million along that and it works. You wouldn't think it would, but it does. Okay, so more sienna along here. Under here as well, it's very warm. 
I think about temperature more and, and values rather than specific colours. I think this area is warm, this area is cool. And I, I'm thinking more in terms of values and trying to get the tones right. So squinting is a very helpful thing to squint down. And by doing that, you, you simplify the image and you, you get rid of all the distracting details. And um, so we... And quite warm here. Okay, now a bit of a warm tone there. And underneath that eye, we'll make that quite warm. Now I've missed a highlight here. Right, going down that eye. There we go, plop that on there. Uh, more white, just pure white in that. Stronger again. And I'll, I wanted to mention the, um, the brown that I used in the shadows. Now, this is, uh, this is something that kind of held out throughout classical painting, um, was the use of brown in the shadows. Uh, you see that a lot in old paintings, you know, um, until you know, the time of the Impressionists. And um, they kind of made shadows, tended to make shadows quite blue. Um, but this, in, in older painting styles, this, it was generally brown. If you, look at a Rembrandt or a Leonardo da Vinci, you'll see brown shadows running throughout the whole painting. Um, so it was used a lot and it's a good starting point for a portrait just to get those dark shadows in and, and a little transition tone there, soften that. I need a bit of warmth in here. Okay, and running up under the chin there. Right here. Now I just want to push those lights a bit more. Actually, there's a grey, grey tone here. And let's get into the, let's just get into some details here. Um, we just put a little blue in the eye. A little blue in there. Some black. I do use black. Uh, we're going to talk about that another time. Um, it's great. Just ultramarine in that eye, I think. And. Starting to take shape. Let's try and blend things in a little bit. I use my fingers quite a bit sometimes. Um, creates a nice soft effect. Now, the highlights in the eyes. Now, one thing I like to do with these highlights is use the other end of the brush. So we dip the other end of the brush in, and I've got my mole stick somewhere, but just tap that in. And that one's a little smaller. Well, a bit big, but there you go. Never mind. We'll knock that down a bit. Yeah. Again, I really feel the need to push some more light. It's all about light, isn't it? It's, it's about popping these, these areas out. There's definitely more light all along that shoulder area, along this area here. Much more light, more ochre. It's a bit, a bit reddish. More ochre in there as well. Okay. If I can just blend that. It's getting a bit heavy. So I'll just 
blend that out a bit. And they're a little bit heavy there. Now I can see a little tone that I've missed. This is a kind of a grayish half tone. Now to make a grayish half tone, I will literally make a gray and put some, well, it's kind of reddish. It's very warm. It's a kind of a warm half tone. So let's, and it's this tone here that I've, I've missed out, a bit redder, a bit warmer. Maybe not that warm. You know, painting is guesswork a lot of the time. Um, you know, some people just want to put the right tone down. I, I just put a tone down and judge it and correct as I need to. And uh, if, you, if you kind of work like that, if you just allow yourself to put a tone down and don't worry whether it's exactly right straight away, just put it down and, and don't judge it, then you take a lot of uh, pressure off yourself to, to be right all the time. And just put, put the tone down and then judge and then adjust it. Because until you, you may mix it here, but until you actually put it up there and see it in conjunction with everything else, you don't really know whether it's right. So it's just better to, to be brave and put it down and assess it. Um, okay. In, in these eyes. Now I want to just step back for a little bit and have a good look, good look at the whole thing. And I just want to tidy this up, blend this together a bit. Just make things sit a little bit easier, a bit, a bit more comfortably. So here we go. Now, I've forgotten the highlight. There's always a highlight under this part of the chin. The, the mouth goes in and then the chin juts out. So you always get a, a little bit of light on the chin here. Like this. OK. So last little touches here. This area here is getting a little bit too gray. So we just knock that down. OK, so I think I'm going to leave it here. Um, this is a very quick demo. Um, I hope you can see the ease of, of mixing flesh colors. It's not really that difficult. It's just white, yellow ochre, red. That gives you a basic flesh mixture. Um, burnt umber, maybe, for the shadows. It's a limited palette. And, and uh, you just put it on, put it down. Don't worry too much whether it's right. Just put it down and fill the canvas in. Step back, have a look, and adjust as you need to. I hope Warren's pre-Renaissance 17th century style has encouraged you to build up your skills and explore the wonderful world of oils. Now, before we end today's programme, we've just got time to help answer a few viewers' questions. First of all, I've had one sent through about brushes. I've heard many people say not to leave brushes flat onto the table or on the hairs. What's the best way to dry my brushes? Well, basically, as long as you don't leave them in the water pointing downwards like this, for long periods and also if they're really wet and you leave them this way because water can seep down into the wood and it can cause it to crack and everything the best thing to do in my in my opinion is just to dry your brushes off clean them dry them off and just lay them flat somewhere even as regards a palette if you leave them bent over the edge of a palette of course the brush eventually will lose the actual shape so just to look after the brushes to maintain the point on them give them a good clean and lay them flat that's the best way by far, and they'll just dry naturally. The second question is regarding masking fluid. Is there a masking fluid that does not contain latex? The short answer to that one is no, because latex is what makes masking fluid work. It's the stuff that gathers around the lid. It's the gunky stuff, this kind of elasticated stuff. That's a cracking piece there, look at that. It's basically, it's liquid latex, which is the same stuff that they use for sort of Hollywood special effects for the skin. Uh, and it's this that makes it work. Other choices that you could use, you could use a good quality masking tape and as long as you're careful and you stick it to your hand or your, your clothes before you put it on your picture so it doesn't rip. You can always use Frisk film as well. 
it doesn't work that well on a rough surface paper because the divots in the actual paper will cause the paint to seep through. There's many different things you can use as a substitute for masking fluid. In the olden days, they used to use wax, melted wax. But that's all for today, folks. Join us next time for another splash of paint. For a free splash of the bi-monthly paint magazine, packed full of stimulating step-by-step -step guides, fantastic features and artistic advice from all your favourite TV artists, visit www.saa.co.uk.